Um, no question, our guys are excited to play. Um, we've, had a, we've had a good couple of days. The break was good for them. And uh, we got back late on Sunday night. And we had a chance to practice that night. We had a chance to practice late yesterday and then now today. And uh, our preparation's been very, very strong. They're very locked in. Um, our practices have been very energetic. Not that they hadn't been before, but I mean, they've been very energetic. I think the, the key now is the, the conversations that go on with these guys um, away, from, away from us, away from here, and, and getting across to, to the, I believe it's seven guys we have that have not played a Big Ten game yet for us. Is that right? I mean, seven. So, I mean, it, it's, it's really important that obviously they've got to go through it, but it's really important that the guys on the team, and they're not old guys to begin with, but that they get across how tough this league is. And, and um, what we don't have an experience, we've got to make up for an understanding. And that means that the game has got to be played not any different uh, at any other point in time. We don't have to do things differently. You, you're never going to play perfect, but you've got to have an urgency. And there's, there's, there's uh, I feel very confident going into uh, the conference with where our mentality is, but at the same time, this league is so good that you've got to be able to, to respond uh, quickly. You know, you got to be able to deal with successes inside of a game. You got to be able to respond quickly to the adversity inside of a game. And because this league is so good that, that it, you cannot compound mistakes. And we even look at a fact like when we played Nebraska, we, we would have multiple turnovers a year ago. And you can't do that. You, you, you cannot have multiples. And you want to have, uh, you want to have the pluses. I mean, you want to have the, the stops in a row. You want to get good shots. You want to play consistent. What you can't have is the, is the mental errors. And what you can't have are the, uh, the multiple errors. And that's what we've got to continue to grow through and, and, and find ways to, to build forward on. But no question we're excited to play. We think Nebraska is battle-tested. I think they're extremely well coached with Tim and his staff. Uh, certainly, they already had great coaches uh, with Tim and Jim Molinari and Kenya Hunter. Now you had Michael Lewis. And I think that's an outstanding staff. So. Um, we're not only preparing for, for what we see, we're preparing for what we know about their team. You know, what, what we think their light, late game, you know, the strategies that they use and, um, and, and how they play best. And our job is to make sure that, that we play the way we, we need to play and, and try to dictate tempo as much as we can. Uh, but really, again, as trite as it sounds, keep the game as simple as we can keep it. And that means the ball moves, and that means we stay connected defensively, and we run like crazy on both ends. So, go ahead. As far as James is concerned, as you just talked about, I mean, I don't know, how much has James developed? And well, it's developed, but I think, again, we, we, from a coaching perspective here with us, I mean, it, it's never about where they're at. I mean, it, it, there, there's no one on our team that we would ever, I've never looked at it with anybody and say, okay, they, they're really clicking on every cylinder possible. Let's just ride them, put them on autopilot. It never works like that. And I think James is the same way. There's constantly things that they can all get better at. And, and um, mindset and, and work ethic, those aren't the issues. It's the, in, in his case, it's just continuing to understand how, how good he's gotta be on the defensive end. Uh, how alert he's got to be to situations, you know, how he's got to be able to, to read the situations, continuing to uh, move without the ball, uh, continuing to, to uh, get lost in the game, so to speak. I mean, I think even with a guy like that, it's really important because he's learning how to play numerous spots, you know, in the offense. We haven't spent as much time at that the last couple of days, you know, with having guys that can really, really move around in the offense. And, and uh, that's something that we work on frequently and we'll work on as the season goes on. Well, he's a big part of that now because you've got to guard him wherever he's at. So just a matter of him just continuing to understand how valuable he can be to us on both ends of the floor and how he can't let offense dictate anything else in his game. And when he's playing his best is when he's defending and running and rebounding defensively. And then all of a sudden, and he's moving without the ball, then all of a sudden uh, he's usually getting more open looks. And that's really important. Oh no, I don't. Well, that's a hypothetical because I'd have. I can't. I can't really. I don't even think like that, right? I mean, so it, I, I, 
I don't even know how to answer it other than th th it's all about that day's improvement. And I know that sounds boring, but that's really what it is. And, and, and getting ready to have a good plan for tomorrow. And tomorrow is, happens to be game day. But if it wasn't, it'd be getting ready to have a good plan to make them better inside of practice, you know, whatever it is. So um, have we had a lot of different experiences inside of this schedule? Absolutely. Have I been really pleased and, and, and proud of the way that they have responded to each game, even when we didn't play as well, but with, the, with their preparation going in? No question about it. Have there been times that we've had too much slippage in games? Yes. Is there times that our youth has really showed up, our inexperience or our uh, lack of awareness or lack of responsibility for one another? No question about it. And so it's all a matter of, of just continuing to build on those things, you know, build on what we've got to get better at, not take anything that we do well for granted. And, and um, because the moment you, you get away from something for a couple days is the moment like you never even did it, especially with a young team. So um, for us, so much of it is energy, uh, having great enthusiasm, um, not trying to make, you know, hard-hitting um, – thread the needle type of plays. You know, we don't need to do that. We just need to continue to have them grasp how important it is to move the basketball and to stay connected defensively, get on both backboards and run the court at a high level on both ends, transition D, transition O. And if we can keep building on that, then a lot of things will filter well for us. It's the first time you've asked a question, too, so a long time. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I didn't even thought about that. Um, no, the one thing I think about is the fact that we got four out of five on the road when I look at the to end the season. Um, that, that's the only thing that really strikes me about the schedule. I think with the way that it is, I haven't really thought much about that other than we just need to make sure that our energy of, of, the, of the crowds is just tremendous. And, um, and whether it's the game management, whether it's the music, we, you know, whatever it is, we should have a larger band tomorrow night with the alumni band. Those are the things that, that I think about, right? That because I want a team that is full of energy on the court. And one of the great ways you get that is to have a crowd that's full of energy. So to me, having people come in that aren't normally or maybe usually here on average, like some others, and understanding just how valuable they are. Right? I mean, whether you're coming from two hours away and this is your first game of the year or whether you only get to come here during Christmas time, through the Christmas break because of the, because of the ticket situation, bring your very best. And I can't, I can't say that enough because that's what makes this place such a challenge for everybody else. It's when everybody's connected. The team, the crowd, the pageantry of it, there's just an energy that, that just envelops you. And that's, that's what I get more concerned about than anything else. But... Um, um, we just really look at it. We, it's just our next opponent. You know, it happens to be um, uh, right after Christmas, and you try to cover everything that you need to cover with your team to get ready for that opponent. And I have a tendency to over overthink, you know, all the other stuff, like when it comes to the crowd and, and, and the energy that we're going to need because it's always about, as a coach, how do, you, how do you just score one more point, right? And anybody that says differently – is, is dealing with fool's gold. You'd like to win games by large margins every night. That's not how it works, right? It doesn't matter if it's the NFL. I gave the, the team the, the story. A lot of them hadn't seen it, but how the, you know, how the Steelers won the other day, you know, and watching that game. And it, it's, it's personal for us because of John, but, but uh, just incredible to watch that game come down that way and the ball go across. Did you see it? Ball go across the goal line like that, you know, over three people. Everybody fighting like crazy in the ball, and it comes down to the ball just getting over the goal line, you know, by an inch or so. And that's how tight games can be. So as a coach, you're always thinking that way. That's a long answer, but that's really what it is to me. And uh, and we just got to deal with it one one at a time and try to put our very best foot forward and have the the best level of energy we can possibly have from top to bottom, us and the crowd. Do you expect to have Juwan? Oh yeah, absolutely. Why wouldn't we? But the last time we talked, you weren't sure what his situation was going to be. Juwan Howard? I mean, I mean, Juwan Morgan? Wait, as far as injury-wise? Oh, he's been fine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm losing my train of thought. I called him Juwan Howard. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, he's been fine. That name, and, and he did a good job while he was home. I'm sorry. I'm having a brain lock there. So you're ahead of me. No, he's been fine. I haven't noticed anything. 
Chuck didn't play him as much today. We can take that up with Chuck. Chuck didn't put him in the scrimmage as much. I'm sorry, Terry. I wasn't even thinking. Absolutely, it's too much. Because unless I think I, I've I've felt like this forever, and I'm not sure how every coach. I, I would hope the majority of them would think this, especially in the in the in these higher level conferences. You can't have one or two people, three people doing something that the others aren't doing. It just it it's it it, it doesn't bode well when it comes down to it at the end with how important the tournament is, how important seedings are, how important RPIs, all those different things are, and. Um, it, it's got to be it's got to be universal across the board, and and uh, I think 18 is fine, and I think it allows. Um, I wouldn't even want to think what we'd be trying to do if if we had to play 20 with some of the other commitments that we have. We have a lot of commitments, right? We have the Gavit, we have the we have the Crossroads, we have the big the ACC Challenge. I mean, those are commitments, and then you're always trying to find a way to to get things at home. So, um, 18 is fine, and I'm actually. I actually have no issue whatsoever with starting it early next year like they are. I think that's great for college basketball. I'm not sure how everybody else feels about that, but personally, I think it's great. I think it brings a lot of attention. Um, you'd always like to have a little more time after around Christmas for your team, but it doesn't work that way. So I think it's, it's, it's good the way it is. Was that, basic, was that what you were asking? Yeah. No, the only thing that really, the only thing that really made me raise two eyebrows when the schedule came out was finishing with four out of five on the road, is is after winning a championship. That's the only thing. But I mean, it, it but, but it is what it is. So that was about a two day uh, bewilderment, and then you just move on and and get ready to play each game as it comes. Well, we entered Big Ten play without James Blackman a year ago. That was a whole different deal and because he was just coming off the injury. And we weren't completely sure where that was at yet. We had a pretty good idea, but we weren't completely there. And uh, so that was really hard. Um, I think it's by feel. I really do. I, I, I think it's um, – you know that you want to play guys. You, you know that you want to bring fatigue to the game. Um, but at the same time, you, 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 you've got to put them in positions where they can be successful. And they have to understand the worst thing you can do is over magnify the level of the game, right? Whether you're home, whether you're at the road. The bottom line is, is you want to have a level of consistency no matter who you're playing. And it starts with you, right? I mean, every team has got different personnel. Every team has got different strengths. Some teams are obviously better than others. Okay, so that's part of your preparation. But your mindset is, is how you go about it. All right, and, and, and the responsibility that you take for yourself and for your teammates and, and so much of that is we're going to play fast, so there's going to be some mistakes in that, but there can't be home run hitting type plays. There can't be even triple hitting type of plays, all right? And there, and there can't be a uh, – you can't have mental errors. I mean, and you, and you certainly, like I said earlier, you can't compound them. So you've, you've, got to, you've got to find a way to help people ease into it. And so I'll take a good look at it like I have at the, at the, uh, the plus-minus now of lineups. In certain games, I never look at the plus minus when once we get this far into the season just as a whole, and I never even sometimes look at it just on the last five games. I'll look at it in different combinations of games, of sequences, you know, of similar type um, uh, opponents, you know, in, in the way that they play. And the one good thing about this league, or one thing that makes this league interesting, I think, you know, the old school Big Ten, they played a certain way, like you knew what you were getting every night from a certain team. Right, this Big Ten is not really like that. I mean, th this team can th these teams can play a lot of different ways, us included, and they can play big, they can play small, they can play quick and fast, they can play it in the half court, they can change defenses. You know, there, there's there's so much that goes on in the game. You got to be prepared for that and read each situation as it comes inside of the game. You got to plan ahead, but then you have to be able to be flexible and adjust your plan constantly. You know, and and sometimes um, w matchups will dictate things. You know, with who's in the game, who's not in the game. Sometimes the hot hand, sometimes the experience will 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 play into it, and every game becomes different. And you just have to you have to have a flexible mind. In my mind, uh, 
mindset to be able to look and see what the game has given you and take advantage of it. No, I'm not constantly looking to shorten it at all. I mean, not at all. That's, I think I just said with him is that you look at each game is different, right? And, and then you have to read your players inside of that game. So you can go into the game kind of having an idea of combinations once you have had enough combinations to study it. Early on, it's very hard to do that, right? And, it, and it's also very hard to go off the last game, right? But, but, but um, there, there's, there's good ways to look at the, the two, three, four man combinations to a degree and then certainly the five men. And, and, and how you plug things in there. And I think it's really having an idea for how that other team wants to play in situations. You know, what, what are they like when they're up? What are they like when they're down? What are they like in the last two minutes and last four minutes? You know, and, 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 and have a feel for that going into it. And then when it comes to your team, okay, how do we make sure we're as fresh as we can possibly be at the end of the game? How, how do we make sure that when we've got a chance to make that run, that 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 we're not spent, right? And and then it becomes a, you know, paint my numbers a little bit, you know, and the numbers change, <laughs> so it just is. I mean, it's I don't walk into it and say, okay, we're subbing him at this mark, we're subbing him at that mark. Um, you like to do that, but you have to read the game. And then and then again, to me, the the most important job we have as coaches when it comes to the substituting, is not the obvious substitution, right? It's when do you get that person out because you know them right before they hit that wall or, or right before, the, or how long do you stick with them because you know they just kind of kind of work their way into it a little bit. So, you know, sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss, but you really got to take a, you got you to have a good feel for that inside of the game. And what you see and what the fan might see with me taking somebody out might be because I know what happens when they hit that wall. So we got to make sure that we don't, they don't hit the wall right now. We get them that rest so they can come back in and be good because we got a 40 minute game minimum, right? And, and we're not living in the moment as much as it's play by play and we got to still be able to plan ahead for the, for the end of the game. Uh, Go ahead, Terry, you had one. From a scouting standpoint, I was just curious, does it help to have a common tape for the team at this point? I mean, the, the fact that you both played for Kansas, does that? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it helps get the respect level. I mean, I think that's one thing. So um, to me, it's, it's how do they play? You know, the one thing that, that, that we learned this from, uh, from the Ravens, and the coaches have done a great job with this. I don't put this one together. They do. The guy that's got the team is, okay, how are they built? You know, and maybe a lot of NFL teams do it, but when John starts the, the week, he starts it with, okay, this is their strength. This is how they're built, right? And that's exactly what these guys do. And whether I go into the film room first, with my edits, or whether they started out with that, that's going to be one of the first things that they see. And then, and then as we go along, you know, the the it's not just regimented. You know, like they're in there watching, or they'll watch personnel now. All right, we, we're, before practice, we watch film that I put together for an hour. All right, on 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 the majority of how they play really well. A lot of Kansas in there. They did some really good things against Kansas, against Creighton, people of that nature. So it, it's it's always important to get the team ready for their best. Right, but also show, okay, this is where we're going to exploit this, this is where we're going to exploit that. The thing that I've loved about this team is they've really, they've really understood what the team's strengths are and then what those individual strengths are. We haven't always adhered to them, but we've, we've done a really good job of coming into it. So like opponents helping that, um, it, it's all a matter of how you, want to, how you want to frame the film. But the last thing, we, we, we don't want them to have any illusion all right, whatsoever, that any of this is going to be easy in any game, all right? Whether you're playing uh, a team that's got a single digit in front of their name because they're ranked or a person that's got something in the 300. It doesn't make any difference. They've got to get ready for each individual game because they matter so much in the whole scheme of things.